ever thought how weird it is that people wear a cross around their neck? Why is that weird? Well, it's weird because the cross was a form of execution. So imagine wearing an electric chair on a chain around your neck. I mean, what's going on here? What's going on here is God's clearest revelation of his justice and his love and how justice and love come together at the cross is clear. Now, there are a lot of problems with this idea of Jesus dying on a cross for my sins. Some f people find it morally repellent. They find it primitive that Christians are fascinated by the cross. But I can promise you the cross of Jesus Christ is right at the center of my life, and it's right at the center of the life of every follower of Christ. So this morning, we're going to consider the cross. Who nailed him? Why did Jesus die on a cross? Well, Judas Iscariot obviously betrayed him for 30 pieces of silver. Then he was brought by some soldiers to the home of Caiaphas, the Jewish high priest. And there, it had been prearranged that some people would bring some false testimony against Christ. But the testimony was contradictory. And so finally, Caiaphas, the high priest, stands up and says, I demand of you, Christ, are you the Christ? Are you the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus says, yeah, I am. And then he says, and you will see me coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And at that moment, Caiaphas tore his mantle. And he said, what more blasphemy do we need? You've heard this guy's blasphemy. What is your decision? And they condemned him guilty, deserving death. Well, the next day, they brought Jesus before Pontius Pilate. And Pontius Pilate wanted to release Christ. He thought Christ was innocent. But the people kept on pressing nail Christ. Pilate says, why? And then he has a stroke of genius. He says, you know, do you want uh, me to release, because it's my tradition at this time of year to release a prisoner, do you want me to release Barabbas, this known criminal, or do you want me to release Jesus, the king of the Jews? And to Pilate's amazement and horror, the cried crowd, Barabbas, we want Barabbas. Now, the Bible doesn't talk about what happened in Barabbas' heart and mind after that event. But I can promise you, I've thought many times about Barabbas, about a guy who was supposed to die, and instead of him dying, there was a substitute, Jesus Christ. I've thought many times about Barabbas possibly walking up that hill to see this guy, Christ, dying on a cross in his place. And I've wondered, I wonder what, what went through Barabbas' mind. And I can't help but thinking he might have been saying, he did it for me. He is doing it for me. I deserve to be on that cross dying. I should be executed because I'm a criminal. But Christ, who never sinned once, is dying in my place. We're going to get we're going to get to the idea of the cross around people's neck in just a minute. But Cliff, you are great at writing fan fiction, my guy. So great at writing fan fiction. You went into this whole thing about Barabbas and what he might have thought and what he might have felt. Hell no. That shows that you have no idea who Barabbas was. Barabbas, who, by the way, his name was also part of his name is Yashu as well. Barabbas was actually declaring that he was one of the messiahs that was supposed to come. Barabbas wasn't a criminal in the mindset of robbing and stealing and killing uh, the Jewish people or within the town. No, Barabbas was someone who was proclaiming to be the Messiah of the Jews, but he recognized and understood the assignment. And that is you are to overthrow the Roman government. That was Barabbas crime. And during this time of year, Pilate rounded up anybody who was claiming to be anybody who was claiming to be the Jewish Messiah. And he was executing them. As a matter of fact, Pilate was so ruthless at executing people who claimed to be the Messiah that later on he was called to Rome to answer for his own crimes of being so vicious towards people like that. But fortunately for him, the emperor died, so he didn't have to face that judgment. But to put Pilate in a position where Pilate was so amazed and shocked and all of this is fan fiction again. And this fan fiction is found in your Bible, but also Cliff elaborates on it. Pilate 
routinely killed anybody who would do that. And Pilate would not have had any remorse whatsoever for this Nazarite, this Nazarene, whatever he was, who was claiming to be the Messiah as well. For him, to him, he was just another person who was a troublemaker. The, the Yashu character was just another character, just another person who was a troublemaker, another person who was going to be executed. And this whole story about him uh, feeling bad and washing his hands, there is actually no information that verifies that. And when somebody brings up the pilot letters, those letters have already been proven to be a forgery. All right. They're late. I forget what century they were written in, but they are a forgery and they are late, late, late as hell. But that is fan fiction as far as depicting Pilate in this way. And mainly it's done so that the Romans look good, so that the Romans don't look bad. Because when the writers of the Gospels were writing this book, they were Hellenistic Jews who recognized that the Romans cannot look like the ultimate evil or the, 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 the big antagonist in the story. So they had to write them in such a way that they didn't look as bad. And since Pilate was never prosecuted by the emperor for emperor augustine for being that way then there was no reason to write him that way <laughs> but to the cross aspect of it the cross is one of the most ignorant things that i've ever seen and i'm sad to say i used to wear a cross I used to have a cross ring I used to have the necklace I used to have pendants for my suits I used to have it all over my house the whole shebang on my vehicles all of it because I was big time believing in the cross. And one of the things I realized is that if Jesus, yes, Yashu was alive today and did his messaging today and, and died today, that we would have an injection needle or, or a firing squad, a gun, or you know, the electric chair, something like that. That's what people would be doing. You know, if Jim Jones was the guy, y'all have a pack of Kool-Aid, you know, on your you'd be wearing a pack of Kool-Aid tattooed on your body. To wear the instrument of death is not the greatest sign of allegiance, nor is it the greatest sign that's supposed to be in your book. If you, Cliff, truly understood the book that you're reading, it is not Jesus' death that's supposed to have mattered. Because if Jesus died and just stayed dead, then the whole thing about Jesus would be proven to be untrue. The biggest thing in your Bible is Jesus' supposedly resurrection. So it shouldn't be a cross that y'all are walking around wearing. Y'all should be walking around wearing an empty tomb or wearing a rock since the rock rolled away and showed the empty tomb. If you was truly trying to show your belief in this Bible and the belief in this deity, then that's what you would be wearing. But the whole idea of Jesus dying for your sin is offensive in itself. I want you to think about it. In most of the religions around the world, no innocent uh, blood <coughs> ever had to be spilled in order for you to reach atonement in more of the modern religions and even some of the ancient religions like Buddhism and uh, Hinduism and whatnot. The innocent blood of animals, the innocent blood of a person is not required in order for their God, their primary God to forgive you for Brahma, to forgive you for the way or the energy, the ether to forgive you. There is no need for the blood of some innocent sentient animal or human in order for that God to forgive you you simply are forgiven based on your God knowing your heart not some action that is taken even in Islam which is an Abrahamic religion you do not need the innocent blood of an animal in order to be forgiven of your sins you simply have to truly repent and stop committing the offense and then your God will forgive you. In the ancient teachings of Mayat, there was no forgiveness of the spilling of innocent animals. It was you and what you did and how you changed who you are and how you treated yourself, how you treated your neighbors, how you treated the society. That is all that is required. And the fact that your God requires the innocent blood, the death of animals and people who had nothing to do with your iniquity just shows how evil your God is. But y'all hold that up as a moment of greatness and love and justice. It is not justice. It is complete and total injustice. And y'all have a great day. And remember always, you have to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good journey, good vibrations.